images of police violence and racial unrest have many Republicans regretting their support of a president who can't even sweep all that under the rug. According to the New York Times, former President George W. Bush and Senator Mitt Romney won't support Mr. Trump's re-election. Colin Powell will vote for Joe Biden, and other GOP officials may do the same. You know, I think this is really huge. Everyone trusts Colin Powell. No one wonders why, finds out more about him, and stops. Now, Richard, you worked in the Bush State Department in the run-up to the Iraq War. If you've lost someone with as high moral standards as George W. Bush, is there any hope? Actually, George W. Bush was the first person to warn of the pandemic. He did fantastic things to save millions of lives in Africa. After 9-11, what did he do? He went to a mosque and he told Americans to reach out to others, even if they're of a different faith. I guess occupying Iraq was a kind of outreach to Muslims. Yeah, sometimes you reach out to people so hard you vaporize them. Yeah, and now Richard, while we're talking about uh, Bush's legacy here, does Trump need to wage more unjustified war in the Middle East in order to secure Bush's support? I think we've had quite enough of those for the for the time being. I think we've basically checked that one on the scorecard. Aww. Moving on, on Twitter, Richard, you oppose Senator Tom Cotton's plan to send in troops to quell protests. Is it because we're taking valuable troops away from occupying other countries? Well, to some extent, yes. What you call occupation has actually kept the peace in Europe fantastically well or the peace in Korea quite well. The last thing, though, I want to see or our troops take aim at the American people. Yeah, and the army would look pretty wimpy next to our bazooka-wielding police force. Now, the growing instability in America brings us to today's Inside the Hill debate. Should we invade America? I mean, we are led by a madman with weapons of mass destruction. I think there's a coalition of the willing that's ready to invade. You'd have Vietnam, Iraq, Iran. I would love to see us invaded by uh, somewhere like France or maybe, Ooh. you know, guerrilla fighters from Barcelona. That'd Ooh, be nice. top us. Yeah, I mean, we gotta fight them here so we don't have to fight them here. I think as long as this whole moment ends with us pulling a disheveled Trump out of a spider hole, yeah. I think that would make it all worth it. I think you raise a lot of good points when we show the sort of pictures that we're, when we see the kind of pictures we're seeing about our streets. This is not what America should be. The man speaks the truth. This isn't who we are except for our entire history. Well, moving on, Dr. Bloom, let's talk about the fate of superpowers like America. This is a moment where people are kind of taking a taking a look. What's your view? I think superpowers, once they're out of their prime, they think that life is over, but really life has just begun. One thing I would recommend to America is perhaps joining the AARP, you know, get 15% oh. off at uh, select restaurants. I'd love to see America take some time for itself. Stop driving on the sidewalks, move to the villages, and take a sitting shower with a Mary Tyler Moore show background actor. A lot of history is about rising em rising powers and, and fading ones. So it's a tricky moment. The good news is we got through the end of the Soviet Union, its empire, without a war. Cold War stayed, uh, had stayed cold. We won the peace. All that was good. Yeah, whatever happened to Russia? You never hear about them except when they pick our president. I just got a hot tip on a free sunken statue. So that's all the time we have. Thank you to our guest, Richard Haas, author of New York Times bestseller, The World, A Brief Introduction, available now. Uh, no dinosaurs were mentioned in the book. Incomplete. Oh, that's a shame. Well, catch our exclusive <laughs> interview tomorrow with Republican strategist J.K. Rowling. She'll reveal the thousands of anti-trans Easter eggs in her books. Ooh, gonna be a long one.